What's going on, Maverick fans? Welcome into NBA Now from Chat Sports. Today, I'm breaking down five players and my prediction for their stat lines in 2019 2020. I only had to choose five. It was kind of tough choosing who I wanted to, but I know one that I wanted to do. This was an easy one. It is Luka Doncic, the 2018 19 Rookie of the Year last year. You know, he almost made an all star team last season. And it. I have the idea of what he needs to do if he wants to make an all-star team. I've got the stats predicted for you, and that's coming up here in just a minute. But I got a question for Luka, and it's can he lead Dallas to the playoffs with Kristaps Porzingis? Because that's the only question mark I think that people have about Luka Doncic is, hey, can this guy take this Maverick team to the playoffs at such a young age? Now, you can see why he was Rookie of the Year. You can see why he was nearly an all-star with the numbers he put up. The, the kid did everything. I mean, let's remember, this guy was 19 years old turned 20, you know, near the back half, but whatever. 21.2 points per game, nearly eight rebounds, six assists, and then 33% from three. I've talked about it before, but I'm going to mention it again. That three-point percentage only took a dip because that usage rate went up so high near the end of the season when like four of the five starters got traded and Luca had to do it all by himself, but he still proved that he could put up big numbers that's what I expect him to do again next season. So here are my stat predictions. And I didn't just go round numbers for you guys. No, I went into the details of each one. Luka is getting into great shape this summer. And you get an in-shape Luka Doncic, these are the numbers you're going to get from the kid. 24.3 points per game. I got him at 6.5 rebounds. So the rebounds go down just a little bit because now you got Porzingis in there. He's not going to have to rebound quite as much, hopefully, if Porzingis can rebound well. The assists, however, take a little jump up because of Porzingis again, because you're passing to more talented players than you were last season. So I've got him at 7.2 assists per game. And then the three-point percentage becomes a little bit more efficient at 35% as well. Luka Doncic is going to be a triple-double threat on a nightly basis, and I'm excited to see him in his second year. And with the team he's got, it's a lot better than what he finished the season with last season, uh, last year that is, because you got DeLon Wright, he's technically your point guard. I'm putting Tim Hardaway Jr. in for this one at the shooting guard position. Luka Doncic is the three, but he'll be handling the ball the entire time. Rim rolling Dwight Powell in the middle, and of course, Kristaps Porzingis. So I gave you my prediction. I gave you those all-star-like numbers there for Luka Doncic. I want you to give me your stat line prediction for Luka Doncic in the 2019-2020 season. So give me points per game, rebounds per game, assists, and go ahead and throw in the three-point percentage as well. And if you love the NBA, if you love the Dallas Mavericks, you're going to want to subscribe here at Chat Sports, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Hit the big red button that says subscribe. It's hard to miss. It's basically blinking at you in, in the face. It says, hey, hit this button. So go do that. Help us get to 150,000 subscribers. Speaking of KP, let's talk about him. What's his stat line going to look like? Well, you got to remember the guy hasn't played since 2018. He tore his ACL with the New York Knicks. It was a messy injury, but now he's hopefully coming back better than ever. At least that's what the Dallas Mavericks believe. They think with their training staff, with the off-season program that he's been going through, he's going to return in better shape than ever. Now, with Porzingis, we know the injury scares. And also, as a 7'3 guy, Porzingis isn't the best rebounder in the world. That's a huge question mark that comes with Porzingis' game. But, last time he was healthy with the New York Knicks, 22.7 points per game. He still got a good amount of boards at 6.6, 2.4 blocks per game. That's going to be one of the most valuable things he adds to this Maverick team is his rim, uh, rim protection. And then the three-point percentage at nearly 40% from a seven-foot-three guy. That's why they call him the unicorn. So next season, what's it going to look like? I got the numbers for you. And you can see in the background, Chris House is getting freaking yoked in the gym this season. 25.2 points per game. That's what I have him at. And hey, maybe that's high, but if he's healthy... I think that's what he should be putting up with a guy like Luka Doncic next to him. The rebounds, they need to go up. And I still don't think this is enough. I think he needs to average more than this. But I think this is where he'll be at, at about 7.2. I've got the blocks per game coming down just a little at 2 per game because he got another good shot blocker in there with Maxi Kleba. And then the three-point percentage. He's going to get a ton of open looks because he's going to be playing with one of the best players he's ever played with in Luka Doncic at 40% from three. Speaking of Luka. The assist numbers from Doncic are going to be insane for Porzingis to play with because he's never played with any guys that are really just great passers. When you look at the guys he's played with in New York, Jarrett Jack. Yeah, Jarrett Jack is the guy who has averaged the most assists per game that Porzingis has ever played with at 5.6. Brandon Jennings, Trey Burke, Derek Rose, 
And then Carmelo Anthony was the fifth best passer Porzingis has ever played with. And that's saying something. Now that Chris Tapps has an elite guy that can, that can see the court really well in Luka Doncic, it's pretty clear that he should get some open looks and become an even better player than he was when he was healthy in New York. Now, Porzingis has already made the all-star team. He made it back when he was healthy, even though he only played a little over half of the season with the New York Knicks. So next year, who do you think has a better shot at making the all-star team? Think it's Kristaps Porzingis, type KP. And if you think it's Luka, type LD. I'm going to go with Luka on this one because he's got more of the all-around game. He's the passer. He can rebound. He can score. Now, I know I've got him averaging less points per game than Porzingis, but he still puts up big numbers. I'm going to take Luka Doncic as the better shot at making the All-Star team, but let me know who you think. Now, let's get into Jalen Brunson. This guy quickly became a Maverick fan favorite last season. So that's why I kind of wanted to talk about his year in 2019-2020. Now, of course, in 2018, selected in the second round of the draft, became a steal in that second round. And once Port, or, uh, excuse me, once J.J. Barea got, went down with an Achilles injury and Dennis Smith Jr. got traded, Jalen Brunson became a starter, like nearly a full-time starter for the Dallas Mavericks. And he has now, next year, the freedom to run the offense with the second unit. I think that's where he's best suited. And last year, you can see that big jump he had in, a, in uh, his stat line. I mean, it was just a seismic difference. Seven points per game, up to 15 points per game. A great assist guy, a great passer at 2.4 2 assists, up to nearly five. Became a better three-point shooter. And all of this happened, the efficiency went up and the numbers went up with more minutes per game for Jalen Brunson. So what do I have him at next year? I've got him right in the middle, a little closer to that post All-Star break, Jalen Brunson, at off the bench. Now you gotta remember, this is all off the bench because he will be the second unit point guard, at least that's what I predict. 13.2 points per game, 2.2 rebounds per game. I've got him at five and a half assists because he'll come off the bench and, and you know be able to assist those bench guys and I think that'll work out really well for him. And then the three-point percentage, I've got it going up. I think he becomes a better shooter over the offseason. He's been practicing with Team USA. I think that'll help him a lot at 36.3%. He's going to be a valuable, valuable member of that second unit for the Dallas Mavericks. And if you want to use him in 2K, maybe you want to use him, maybe you want to use Luka Doncic and Porzingis and the whole rest of the Mavericks crew, here's how I can get you a free copy of NBA 2K20. Use our friends at my bookie. Sign up and deposit. You put down... 50 bucks, hey, they're going to give you 50 bucks for free. You put down 100, they're going to give you 100 for free. However much you want to bet, put it down, place that first bet, and then email us, promo at chatsports.com. Again, that's promo at chatsports.com, and we'll get you a free copy of NBA 2K20 for PlayStation or Xbox. Whatever you play it on, we'll get it for you. And if you want to challenge me, and you want more of my Dallas Mavericks content all the time, every time, Follow me on Twitter at all underscore things underscore Mavs. Get my follower count up a little bit. DM me and we'll play a little bit of NBA 2K as well. That's going to be Tim Hardaway Jr. This is going to be another guy that could potentially come off the bench. Some nights maybe he starts. It kind of goes back and forth with Tim Hardaway Jr. and how the fans see him in this lineup. But I've said it once. I'll say it again and I'll continue to say it here on Chat Sports. I believe Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to be a valuable member of the Dallas Mavericks next season. I know that contract is just ridiculous. He's way overpaid, but that doesn't mean he still can't contribute. I mean, when he was playing, and this is his time with the Knicks and the Mavericks last season, so it was combined. He's putting up big points per game at 18.1. Now, the rest of the numbers for Tim Hardaway Jr. don't stick out to you because you sign Hardaway and you traded for Hardaway to be a scorer. That's what he does. And the three-point percentage at 34 is not going to get it done for the Dallas Mavericks. So that's got to step up, and I'm going to predict in 2019-2020 that it does. Now, you see the points per game go down. You're like, Jimmy, what's up with that? Why is he not averaging 18 points per game? Because if you're the Mavericks, you don't want Tim Hardaway Jr. averaging 18 points per game. That, that's seven, Tim Hardaway averaged seven three-pointers per game last season. If he does that next year, if he's taking that many shots, something has gone wrong with Luka Doncic and Chris Haps Porzingis. So... Sorry, I went on a little rabbit hole there. But points per game, I've got him at 14 and a half, which I think is perfect off the bench. And then all the other numbers are still pretty low, but the three-point percentage goes up. He becomes more efficient. Now, last year, when you look at the six man of the year candidates, Lou Williams, of course, won it, averaging 20 points per game. Montrez Harrell was in second at 16.6 points per game. And DeMontis Sabonis was right there at 14.1 points per game. 
So if Tim Hardaway Jr. comes off the bench and can put up about 14 to 15 points per game on efficient shooting, because that's what those three guys did. They did it all efficiently. I think he could be a six man of the year candidate in 2019, 2020. But what do you think? If you disagree with me, if you're like, Jimmy, you're crazy. Tim Hardaway Jr. is not gonna be a six man of the year. Type in for no. If you agree with me, which I hope you do, type Y for yes. Let me know, is Tim Hardaway Jr. gonna be a candidate for six man of the year in 2019, 2020? Now, Dwight Powell. I predict him to be the starting center in, in uh, the Dallas Mavericks system next year because he played great for them. And Rick Carlisle loves this guy. He works his butt off in the practice gym. That's why he's earned himself an extension with the Dallas Mavericks. And with that lob threat that he possesses, that's why he's a perfect starter next to Kristaps Porzingis. And like Jalen Brunson, who just excelled after the All-Star break and excelled after the Kristaps Porzingis trade, Dwight Powell got more of a chance to shine as well because you got to remember, DeAndre Jordan was your starting center. And then Dwight Powell became the starting center, and here is what he did in Dallas. He went from 8.7 up to 14.8 points per game. The rebounds went from 4 to nearly 8. I mean, the guy was a double-double threat, which wasn't something that Powell was known for. Assists per game don't really matter because he's a center. But I'll tell you what, that three-point percentage, when you go from 24.3% up to nearly 40%, that is like jumping over the Grand Canyon. That's just, that's just an incredible jump for Dwight Powell from beyond the arc as a stretch five. And next year, I expect him to be closer to post All-Star break Dwight Powell than I do pre All-Star break. So I've got him at 13 points per game. So not quite where he was after the All-Star break, but pretty darn close. The rebounds per game, I think goes up even more because you need a really good rebounder next to Porzingis. So more will be demanded of Powell. Assist per game, again, does not matter. But the three-point percentage, if he can just become a 33.5% shooter from beyond the three-point arc, that's, that's really all you need from Dwight Powell when you have guys like Luka and Porzingis in the starting five as well that are great knockdown three-point shooters. So I think Powell should start. I think Tim Hardaway should come off the bench. But maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you've got a different starting five in mind. So what do you think the Dallas Mavericks starting five should be in 2019, 2020.